I'm going to speak of a technology, but the, more than the technology, the perspective is more important. Now, I'm going to talk of something called biomicrofluidics. But you know, we are coming back after corona. And what has corona taught us? It taught that, you know, healthcare is important. It also told us that the healthcare vulnerability doesn't depend on how rich a country you are. The richest of the countries have suffered the most. The other thing is, it also says, when we saw in second wave, the infrastructure problem, oxygen and all that, that makeshift arrangements are no substitute for permanent infrastructures. But what it says most importantly, that healthcare doesn't mean building, you know, hospitals, having infrastructure, having enough personnel, that's not enough. Research has to be the cornerstone of any health policy. Without that, you create the best of the things, still, you are one step behind the rest of the world and you are one step behind your own requirement. And that's why research has to be focused on, the Indian healthcare system has to be focused on India's problems. See, the whole problem of the Western world in this corona was what? They gave up research on infectious diseases because infection is a very small part. I, when I was as a postdoctoral student in Germany, I had a stomach upset. They said, we will do endoscopy. I said, why? Because they never thought it's infection. They thought there is something great, something you know, vastly wrong with this person. Now, the thing is that infectious diseases, since they don't work anymore, so it came with great difficulty for them because the whole corona thing was infection. And that's why when we design our healthcare research, it has to be infectious diseases because this is, you know, tropical country. In fact, India had the school of tropical medicine in Calcutta 100 years back. But we have not replicated that. So when we go, our research in healthcare has to be our own way. And that's why the important thing is it has to be researched that way. It has to be delivered. The delivery system has to be like that. And so, Healthcare, you know, we have seen in our country, whenever there is a healthcare problem, we put a doctor at the top to solve the problem. I'll give you an example. And this is how many of the people who are sitting at the top thing, when there was oxygen crisis, there was a task force in which Dr. Devi Shetty was put. Now, great doctor, great cardiologist, cardiothoracic surgeon, but what does he understand of oxygen production, storage, transportation. It's a technological problem. It's not a doctor's problem at all. And hence, see, the role of technology, its management, entrepreneurship, business, government efforts, policies, these are extremely critical. Doctors are critical. They are at the center. But unless you have these, neither research nor delivery of the health system will work. Now, if you look at the conventional biological methods, I'm talking of a technology, in that, you know, you have this pipette, burette, test tube, petri dish, we have large labs, you have all kinds of protective equipment and all that. The problem is they are expensive to build, they're time consuming to build. It's just as, as you saw that when Corona started, we had only one lab to test that. National Institute of Biology in Pune. Now, now thousands of labs have come up and hence we have to think of a better method, not the conventional method by which the research as well as the diagnostics are done. And so we come to something called microfluidics. What is microfluidics? Microfluidics is a fluid flow, heat transfer, mass transfer, you know, different species diffusion. It's the business of people like me. And so, microfluidics is when you do on a micro scale. A couple of microns, hundreds of millimeters, tenths of millimeter, in that kind of devices. You create the devices on silicon, and the technology is easy. Why? Because we have already got the silicon technology for fabrication of 
chips, electronic chip. So use the same technology to create your mold in which you pour the soft material like polymer and create channels like that. And how we create these channels, I will tell some of the channels we have got with us. You can circulate, my students are there. Uh, they will circulate and you see some of them. Now, we call it, in uh, our term, lab on a chip. That means, suppose you have got certain things to do. Say, in corona itself, you find out whether it is coronavirus, it's there or not. Then you find out whether it is Omicron or not. Now, you will go for corona one, Omicron another one. Similarly, there are many things where not one, say, diabetes. Just one test is not enough. You need blood sugar, you need a high glycosylated hemoglobin, you, you need you know, kidney function test and what and what not. Can you do it on a single chip? And this is what is called lab on a chip. On a chip, on microfluidic devices, all the components of lab is there and it's on your pump. That's what is called microfluidics. Something like this. And the dimension, we have kept a coin just to compare how much it is. You can hold it on a pump and do this technology. Now, some of the things which have come out already of microfluidics is there was one, one testing protocol IIT Kharagpur developed and it was a microfluidic one for corona. The other one, you know, everybody said after a couple of weeks, this uh, drug doesn't work. Hydrochloroquine it doesn't work. That one works. How do you come to know? Within this time, was there any animal trial? No, it's not possible. Was there any human trial? No, it was not possible. How it was done? On a microfluidic device, they created the organ. This is what is called organ on a chip. You call it heart on a chip, lungs on a chip, kidney on a chip. And then you put the drug there in you know components like this and you test and you find out whether it is effective or not, what kind of action it has got on the biological uh, you know, sample. And what is the ultimate dream is to create what is called a human body on a chip, not just one heart. Because what happens, many of the drugs, you bring out a drug for, say, heart, excellent. It shows it, it cures the one heart disease. But in the final stage, you find but it damages the kidney. So drug is of no use. When we can create multiple organs on a chip or a human body on a chip, you put a drug somewhere, you can see what is happening to the other organs also. And for this, you are not to go to the animal trials. Even before that, you come to know. See, today one drug discovery takes 10 years and $1 billion for multinational companies. Can you reduce that time? Can you reduce that expense? For India, affordability and quickly available solutions are very, very important. And hence, this technology is important for countries like us. And then, what is the other problem? That our diagnostic, you know, this is how we, our diagnostic travel. And this is how, what our power system backup. So if you say, I will set up a lab 25 kilometers from Chennai, it's almost impossible. So... This microfluidics don't require any of that. And that's the advantage of this technology. So the time of, you know, 5,000 rupees, 28 hours, you know, it goes from patient to doctor to pathology lab to lab report and comes back. This cycle is broken. It can be done then and there. So that's the advantage of this technology. If we can use it just for diagnostic. So now I will come to a couple of things that we have done at uh, IIT Madras itself. See, we have found out within the body there are temperature gradients, temperature differences. We say body is at 37, body is not at 37. You take it here, it will be something. You take it in the anus, there will be something else. So what does it do? To do that, I used, you know, this kind of a device. It's a, on the principle of heat exchanger, I, in, the, in that, Chip, I had a hot water and a cold water circuit. It created a temperature gradient which is seen by the thermal camera here. And then we put the cancer cells, breast cancer cells. And it shows how the cells migrate. 
So on it, if I'm creating a condition, whether the temperature gradient helps cancer cell migration, you know, what is in medical terms is called metastasis. Whether it's possible, I'm creating on a chip and studying it. So this is what we have done. This is another one that along with thermal gradient, if there is a chemical gradient, a gradient of some attractive uh, a drug, for example, or a chemo attractant. So how do you do that? We created this and, and it's a little bit complex. The device I have given, it's there on that. And we found out under combined thermal and chemical gradient, how it does. And then this is another work, which is very interesting. We created four channels of four different types of pressures. 0.1 Pascal, 1 Pascal, 10 Pascal, 100 Pascal. And there we put the stem cells and cancer cells and found out how under different fluid pressure they proliferate. Now, why this is important? This is important because, you know, why microfluidics is going to be the way for future. The thing is, when you do any test in test tube, that does not replicate your body. Because in your body, suppose you want to see oxygen saturation in blood. You put blood and you put oxygen in that. But your blood is not in a test tube. It's in small microtubules where your blood cells get stretched. And so that we can create a physiological condition on a chip. And we found out under what conditions these uh, cancer cells pro proliferate. So, my dear friends, what is most important is lab on a chip may one day, you know, advent uh, and become the major way of looking at biological research. And for a country like us, it's going to be very important because it is cheap. It doesn't require huge infrastructure. And the engineers, chemists, biologists, mathematicians, entrepreneurs, business people, government, medical practitioners, and healthcare workers should work together to bring healthcare solutions in the future. And that's the thing, because all this in front of you is presented by a mechanical engineer. Right? I had no training in biology whatsoever. So when I was a visiting professor at MIT, I saw people are working in biology. I just walked into it and picked it up and doing this. This is what is required. The importance of people like us with different backgrounds, you know, just like Dr. Pradeep. He started working, working on technologies. He's a chemist. He is a fellow of Indian National Academy of Engineering. Now, this is what is important. That Dr. Pradeep will become a National Academy of Science fellow is no uh, surprise. But that he is a fellow of the National Academy of Engineering is a surprise. And this is what is the actual background. When you look at the problems, you will be the you know, policy makers. Don't look at it from the narrow point of view that this is a healthcare problem. So there is, we need a doctor. We need a doctor, of course, at the center probably. But we also need people like this who will be attacking the problem in such a way that the solution comes as a whole, the overall solution. Thank you very much.